Hello, hello, my friends. How's it going? It is about that time. We are back at it again this Wednesday with some more Risk of Rain. Um, <clears throat> I did a couple parts of Golden Sun, the Lost Age, this past weekend. Um, if you want to check out the VODs for that, we uh, have been doing some, some pretty good progress. But like I said, on the Wednesdays, I think I'm going to... Uh, play an off game, uh, probably Risk of Rain for now, and then as when we get done with Golden Sun is when I'm going to have to actually make a decision of what the other games are going to be that I want to uh, that I want to focus on playing on the stream. It's kind of an intimidating uh, prospect, you know, because I have to, like, commit myself to uh, I have to, like, choose and commit myself to games that I'm going to be playing for a long time. Risk of Rain was an easy choice for, for me to do that. Uh, and, th and there are a lot of other easy choices, but I don't think I want to go entirely easy. I want to maybe pick at least one other game that uh, is a little bit out of my comfort zone or like competitive or something like that. Something that I wouldn't typically play for an extended period of time on stream. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be for that's gonna be a while out. I I think at the very least with Golden Sun we have 15 parts. Like Golden Sun, the Lost Age is going to be a lot longer than the original. I I think may, maybe not like a lot, but it's going to be fairly <laughs> fairly long. Um, but yeah, we'll 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 get to it when we get to it. Uh, but I am going. I'm playing Risk of Rain today and I'm hoping to use Huntress to get to the Voidling because I've been spending so long like an insane crazy amount of time trying to get the uh to beat the expansion for this game like I think it came out I mean <laughs> let me t survivors of the void Oh, it, I, uh, it's that close. I guess I didn't realize I, that the expansion came out this year. Okay, yeah, it did. Yeah, it was released March first, twenty twenty-two. Never mind. I get. It feels like I've been working at this for a lot longer <laughs> than I have been. But um, I'm gonna try use either Bandit or Huntress because I seem to excel the most at these two to try and get that unlock that survivor. Also, by the way, in, in, in case you're wondering, the, the stream is titled Risk of Hemorrhoids. <laughs> and that is because um, this year, my, my body has been falling apart. <laughs> Ever since I turned 25, it feels that everything start, started to go downhill with my health. It used to be that I would only go to the doctor maybe like two or three times a year, and that was because I have hypochondria and I'm really hyper aware of my body and have like pretty heavy health anxiety but um this year i've been to the doctor like six or seven times already um for various things um i've gotten like incredibly sick at least once or twice um and just in general i i don't think it's so much that i uh I'm getting past a threshold and all of a sudden things are happening. I think this is mostly just the result of like bad habits and shit that I've done uh, that I've uh, gained over my younger years and abusing my body. Like I think, uh, remember when I was talking about my longboard and how I was really excited about longboarding to work? Well, turns out that after three or four times of me skating to work there and back, I gave myself shin splints. Uh, and for those that don't know, shin splints are like a micro tear in your muscles uh, that connect to your shin. And they are often cause, or they're, they're a common injury for runners. Um, and they are often because of you overworking your muscles suddenly and not working up to it. Um, so what I was doing is that I was suddenly skating to work like 3.5 miles, or not even 3.5 miles, it's 3.5 miles each way. So it was more like seven miles, skating seven miles a day <laughs> to, to work uh, and needing to get there on time and shit. So that sudden increase of activity on my legs gave me shin splints and now I can't skate without risking giving myself micro fractures. 
<laughs> so, uh, but but anyway, that that's just one of the things. Like, I and I was telling uh, uh, I was telling the people that I live with that um, when I was younger, I feel like I used to just be able to do physical activities and like not have to worry about like how I stretched or anything or like preparation or anything like that. I just did them. Um, but I've realized that doing that for so long probably has contributed to the fact that now everything's falling apart with my body. It's not like terrible. Like it's not terrible. I'm not like suffering or anything like that. There are definitely people in my household that have worse health problems than me. Uh, but I have, uh, I have, def I have definitely gone to the doctor more than often, and I'm reckoning with the fact that I need to be more careful. Get down, Buzz. Go! Oh. Anyway, that all being said, the reason why the stream is called Risk of Hemorrhoids is because I have hemorrhoids. <laughs> I have hemorrhoids. And uh, th they're awful. So uh, just a rivet reminder, uh, consume more fiber. Do not eat so many burg or uh, yummy snack. You need to eat more bud ve vegetable and drink lots of water um, because those are things that I often neglect to do. More so recently because I um, I have a hard time with my Vivance, uh, with my ADHD meds that I, I, I have a hard time remembering to eat during uh, breakfast and lunch. So often the only meal that I have is dinner. And if that dinner is all carbs and cheese and shit like that, then um, I'm, I'm kind of fucked for the day. Like that, that, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, I'm starting to realize that's kind of the, the thing when it comes to eating balanced meals throughout the day is so that your one meal doesn't determine your entire digestive health <laughs> as, as you go throughout your life. Um, you, you generally want to have a good good balance. Like if you're gonna eat carbs and cheese or whatever, you want to like earlier in the day eat vegetables or something like that, so you're not fucking constipated. But for me, dinner rolls around and I just eat whatever we make. And sometimes it's okay. Like I've we've been making a lot more like vegetarian, vegan shit in the past couple years. But um, there are definitely times where it's just bread and cheese. It's just pizza. Tonight I am planning on making frozen pizza. And that is going to the, I have eaten, um, the only other thing that I've eaten today is a McMuffin. Um, and on other, on other days where like the work at, the lunch at work isn't good, uh, and I just don't feel like eating, I will eat nothing. And then I will have, and then I will have dinner. So I really just need to get my, my diet in check, I think for the most part. And that's not even like a, a weight loss thing or anything. It's just literally my, my digestive system would be grateful to me. Because another thing that I've also developed is IBS. And I, that, that feels like something that it, it, it's also like a lot of it is partially caused by like anxiety. <clears throat> like, uh, like apparently I learned from pizza uh, a few weeks ago that people with anxiety, ADHD, and autism tend to have more uh, of a risk for IBS and like digestive issues and shit. But a lot of it is also definitely my diet. And I, get, and I guess when I was younger, I didn't really notice it too much or like care too much. And that's because it didn't like really affect me a, a whole lot, but I, I'm definitely getting the point where I'm starting to notice like a lot of my bad habits and how they um, how they make my body um, bad. <laughs> oh, I just need to fucking get rid of this vagrant dude. Oh no, that was bad. <laughs> that that was a bad one. I felt like it was so, like I was just taking away at its health. But yeah, any, anyway, health shit aside, um, it's been a pretty okay, it's pretty, been, been, been a pretty okay week, I guess. Um, I, I don't know if I told people yet, but I, but I graduated. Um, so I've been waiting on my degree. 
I got the notification that it shipped out today. Um, I think it's kind of lame that they don't give you like an they don't give you an electronic copy of it. You know, they they don't they give me an electronic copy of my transcript, but they don't give me an electric copy or uh, electric an electronic copy of my um, degree. Which I think is really lame, because now I have to wait for my physical degree to get here. Before I can give it to my employer to have them scan it in. For when I uh, want to get a raise for being more educated. So, uh, that, that's the main thing that I'm, <laughs> that I'm waiting on right now. But, uh, Justin, I, I don't know, like, I guess I, I realized today how just the sheer amount of... Uh, of um, credential I have amassed over over the years. I've not been paying attention to it and historically, like my boss always tell, told me, I think when I graduated actually, my boss, uh, I told my boss and he like was smiling and he was like all excited and he was like, yo, that's like really, really cool. And I was just like, yeah, it's pretty neat, I guess. And he was like, dude, you need to celebrate. <laughs> like you need to celebrate more. And I was like, he was like, that's a big deal. I was like, I, I don't know. It's I'm just done. Like I'm I'm glad that I'm done. I don't have to do work anymore. I guess like that's that's the main thing for me. And but yeah, I I, I guess it, it's also caught, gave me the uh, side effect of underestimating like the sheer amount of credential that I've amassed over the years. Because now I have a bachelor's degree in network out administration. I have a bachelor's degree in network operations and security. I have an associate's degree in software development. I have um, like three CompTIA certifications. I have my Cisco certified network administrator certification. I have various uh, software development related, related certifications. I have multiple Amazon Web Services certifications. And I was just realizing that because earlier today, um, a lot of people have been talking about how Internet Archive is potentially going to be sued um, for the because of how they've been providing copyrighted content for for free, and um, what what's potentially going to happen is that Internet Archive is going to be shut down. However, um, a lot of so like a lot of people have been debating the the morality of piracy and shit like that, and a lot of people are making generally when it comes to piracy, people tend to make really really shit takes, uh, not. A lot of people just kind of take the idea that piracy is bad as like a default in general. And even if they've, they've probably done it themselves, most certainly they've done it themselves. Um, and they've just kind of like now pretending that they've taken up this big moral high ground against it. But um, I, I, I guess that's, that's where uh, a lot of that comes from. Ooh. I really need to focus on not dying because I just realized that I did not pick up a single item. Come on. I'm doing so little damage. I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I like this? I, I died the same way that I died last run. Because I know I can, I, I know I can survive the vagrant attack if I don't get hit. Like at all. I, I can, you can usually take a vagrant if you are, if you're at full health <laughs> and, you, and you won't get killed. But um, it always happens that somebody like hits me right before the vagrant the, the, the Vagrant's shockwave goes out. Okay, I, I actually, actually need to make sure I pick up items this time. And, and not even, the, the time before I picked up items, so I can't even blame that. It's really just that I'm, that, that I'm not paying attention. Okay. So, I'm not, uh, there's a, what, what's that? Bundle of fireworks. There's a tri-tip dagger printer. 
that could be potentially useful. Yeah, actually, it, it definitely is, because now I have these white items I can get rid of. And then we'll grab some bleed. Okay. We got two stack the uh, two two tri-tip daggers. I think that's that's pretty good. Um I've definitely came to appreciate bleed as a debuff. Um just it does so much damage. Like I think I really appreciated it when I uh got a shatter spleen with bandit. Uh and like I I think it was like unloading a clip into an enemy would give them like 19 stacks of bleed. <laughs> And uh, that the damage that that does over time is absolutely wild. There are really not a lot of items. Like, where are all the items? I guess we'll we'll grab this, take a peek behind. Oh, actually, is that a, is that a chest? Yeah, there's a chest up there. Okay, we're just gonna go up here and get out of here. Another tri tip. Okay, I I think we're I think we're pretty set. It's probably gonna be another vagrant, but yeah. But we got the bleed. Oh my god. <laughs> Why am <laughs> I have three tri tip daggers and none of the shots that I was doing were making it bleed. Yeah, see, even even like 15, 15 damage per second is is quite a bit, and that's only three stacks of bleed. I have been kind of thinking about what kind of games I would want to play once I once I'm done with Golden Sun. Um, I I think Final Fantasy XIV is actually a very 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 likely candidate because um, I I have put a lot of money into it and it, it's still going and like I need to buy a subscription but I I pot, I like I think I spent sixty dollars initially to get up until um, Shadowbringers, and then I think when I came back to Final Fantasy XIV, um, I bought the Shadowbringers expansion. Uh, and the only expansion that I don't have is Endwalker. However, my character, I, I have only ever played up until Heavensward. I, I beat Heavensward, and I have not gone any farther. So there's definitely a lot of story content that I've missed out on. It's just that it takes so much time um, and and when I am paying a subscription for something, it feels like like I feel more pressured to play it more often. Like I, I feel bad if I don't play the game that I'm subscribed to. Um, so often when I do play Final Fantasy XIV, that it'll be like one of the few games that I play. <clears throat> Which I think, it, however, I think if I put it behind the context of the stream, I think it's I, I think it would be be worth it because then I'm putting in like a I guess I'm, it's more that I'm paying for content rather, or like paying for content that could potentially uh, benefit me rather than me just, me just paying a subscription to a service that I uh, might sometimes not use. But putting it on the stream does the simultaneous service of uh, giving me more value for what I'm spending money for and also giving me dedicated like days that I'm going to be playing it. <clears throat> so I think that that'll be a likely candidate. And then if I do a third game, it's probably... I, I'm i not entirely sure. I, I'd have to really, really think about it. But... And I, I had honestly considered playing Morrowind for an extended period of time, but I, I feel like if I played Morrowind a lot, it would ruin Morrowind for me. Uh... 
because a lot of my uh, a lot of my source of wonder and uh, enjoyment of Morrowind over the years has been the fact that I I space my I space my playthroughs out over the course of a couple years. <clears throat> And then when I come back, I'm just unfamiliar enough with my bearings uh, on the game that um, things are kind of new. They, they, they feel a little new. And like I also explore parts of the map, uh, parts of the game that I haven't explored before. Um, so like for instance, I've only ever played a certain class for the most part in Morrowind. Um, and in subsequent playthroughs, I want to play other classes. Uh, like on, I, I started playing Morrowind on my phone uh, which is a wild thing for me to say, <laughs> like something that I would only have dreamed of when I was younger. Um, but I've been playing Morrowind on my phone through the Open Microwave engine. It's uh, it's a branch of the Open Morrowind project, which is a project where a bunch of devs open source Morrowind and reverse engineered the engine. Um, so now that it, it has a lot more, a lot better optimizations. Uh, and a lot of bug fixes that are just intrinsic to it now. And you can also do like some crazy shit built in, like adjust the graphics. It used to be when you're when you're playing Morrowind, you have to download an external program to adjust the uh, graphics to work on like modern uh, hardware. Or, or to like, for instance, if you have like a 1440p monitor, um, you can't set it to 1440p natively. So you have to download uh, something else. Uh, I, I think it's called Morrowind's uh, graphics extender. But anyway, Open Microwave is basically just an Android port of the uh, Open Morrowind engine. And the only thing you need to do is download the download the, the Open Morrowind engine, and then you need the game files that it can convert. Uh, so like that that's kind of how a lot of these open source projects work, right? They're like, we won't we won't point you in the direction of how to get that how to get the game files um because that would be illegal because it would be promoting piracy um so instead they say uh that you need the game file or like you need a uh, a bot copy of the game and then you use the files from that however in most cases there there <laughs> there's always a way to attain the game files for free usually easily depending on how old the game is in the case of morrowind it's incredibly easy. Um, but anyway, I've been playing Open Morrowind on my phone, and I've been playing uh, classes that I don't usually play. I've been uh, trying to play more of like a magic-based magic based class instead of a weapon-based class, because a lot of the time I tend to play like long swords and spears and daggers and shit. Uh, and I've done archery, of course. Like That's like the one of the first things you do in, in, in an Elder Scrolls game that you find out works well because you don't want to get close to things. But Magic in Morrowind is notorious for, notorious and famous for being uh, incredibly uh, freeing, but simultaneously incredibly broken. So I guess it just depends on like what your, what your desire is for how, uh, how, bro how how much freedom you want to have to break the game because I I feel like with some games for me I'll learn about something that'll break the game or an exploit and I'll be like oh this ruins the f this ruins why I want to play the game with but with Morrowind um, it tends to be the opposite where it's like it just makes me want to play more anyway I considered doing Morrowind as that third game I'm really passionate about it but I just feel like I don't know like I'm afraid it would ruin Morrowind for me. And there's no way for me to know that without actually doing it, but who knows? Oh, I just realized I corrupt, I, I corrupted, corrupted my uh, tri, -tip, tri tip daggers, but that's fine. Whenever I see the needle tick, I always think of the plasma shrimp for some. Like I, I, I can sit, I confuse them. Because the, plat the, the the needle tick kind of looks like a shrimp, <laughs> like, like a reverse shrimp, I guess. Like if, if the shrimp's legs were on the, the outer curve of its body instead of the inside curve. Also, you can, can you imagine the sheer existential horror 
of knowing there's a bug out there that could attach for it, attach to you and like collapse you, quote unquote, create a, a mini black hole where it lands on you. Terrifying. Okay. Ooh, nice. We got a Runold's band. Okay. This is shaping up to be pretty okay. We got a Predatory Instincts. Um, we got... S we got some crowd control. And we also got something... We don't really need need healing because we, we got the thing that's that's blocking for the most part. Let's see. I do want to get rid of these fungi, though, unless I get the, the running fungi. The weeping fungi. I don't, why did I call it the running fungi? You see that guy over there? He runs. But he's a pretty fun guy. Oh, yeah. We are doing damage. TM. I saw you were I saw you were playing City Skylines and I thought you were playing um, I thought you were playing the same game that Evan was. I was like, when did you get into Dyson Sphere program? Oh really? <laughs> Pizza said that they that, uh, she saw uh, Temp playing Dyson Sphere program behind me and it reminded them to play City Sp Skylines. Oh, is that it? Classic? No, that's a delicate watch burner. I don't want a delicate watch. I want a strong watch. Oh, the executive card. Always the best. Always the best fucking equipment to get. Oh, and there's a scrapper over there. Even better. Okay. And a red eye. Ugh. Bottled chaos. Oh no. Oh no. Bottled chaos gives our equipment item a uh, a random equipment effect every time it's activated. And the executive card is activated every time we interact with something that we can purchase. So, this is going to be interesting. Let's get rid of these fungi. And then I like the shield because it's one of the few Huntress always sprints, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that. It's the buddy. He's very, uh, he does not, you guys don't often see Calcifer on stream because he does not like to be um, handled or forced to be anywhere in any way. I mean, same, honestly. Um, he's very relatable in that way. <laughs> Do what? He acts like me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get, yeah, Calcifer is kind of like my little, uh, mini me in, in, in a lot of ways. <laughs> but, uh, he, yeah, he's, he's, he, you guys don't see a lot of him because he, he usually, if he's going to be in on the stream, he needs to be on my lap and uh, he needs to be choosing to be on my lap. He can't be forced to be there. So uh, that results in not a lot of time. Do what? Oh yeah, thank you. Wait. I did, but that's fine. I also thank you for asking me. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> I thought uh, Shrimps was asking if they could have one of my beers. And I was like, yeah, thank you. Because I thought that they were getting me another one. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. <laughs> they, they were like your eyebrows fell when when I passed you, and I knew that that is what you actually meant. And that was, I think, that was the moment that I realized that I was like, oh. Oh yeah, we got a lot of we we got a lot of damage. I think we're gonna be just fine this run. We got a good setup. And if I get a shatter screen out of this, that would be even better. Because that means I would have both the collapse and the bleed. Actually, I I think only in terms of passive items, uh, only Shatter Spleen and the Tri-Tip Daggers give the bleed effect. I think. I may be wrong, but I, I think those are the only two items that give that incur bleed on their own. I think the only exception to that technically would be the, uh, the, the saw blade uh, equipment but I don't think that counts. Oh, did I not fucking, God damn it. We're already so late. <laughs> and I thought, I was running, I was like, why aren't I teleporting? Because I didn't touch the teleporter. And now we're two min three minutes late. <laughs> Hey, Sundered Grove. My least favorite fourth stage. <laughs> we got some okay crit though. I I think I'd, I'd rather have a, a predatory instincts and a single glasses uh, than none. Because that already does a significant significant uh, benefit to our to our damage output. Oh boy. Oh god, I like this red eye like on <laughs> be the, because this red item, the, the thing that makes it so that we do random equipment effects on purchase, the executive card can be picked up by any character. Um, so this is a combination that is just crazy beneficial for anybody, I think. Because I can't imagine on, on any other character uh, any item that would be more crucial or, or I would rather have than the executive card. There, there are very few equipment that I, that I think would be worth replacing. So uh, honestly, if you on any character, if you get the equipment, uh, you get the the executive card, and then get the the thing that makes your equipment do random or, uh, sorry, makes your use uh, fuck your equipment <laughs> uses random equipment effects. Uh, then you should pick a, any character. You're you're gonna be set, I think. Eat a blanket. <laughs> the only ex exception is that it, it used a random equipment effect to like put two points that I could teleport be between. There there are probably a couple anomalies. I wonder if we're gonna stumble across anything like bad for us. Like, I think that would be the only thing that changes my mind about this combination is if we stumble upon equipment effect that is just really bad. But I don't think there are any. Yeah, I guess it does have. It could have the potential to trigger a a, a blue a lunar equipment effect. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it does. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it I don't know if it does, but if it does that that would be a significant risk, I guess.
because if there was a lunar item, a lunar equipment that it, that it activated on me randomly, that could definitely fuck our run over entirely. But I don't. That seems like something that would be too, too, uh, too risky for something that you're uh, for a red item, I guess. I need to find another scrapper. I mean, so far I've not experienced anything negative, so. We also need to try and find that gold chest. I'm hoping it's in an easy location. I don't have to hunt around too much. Yeah. Oh. Okay, cool. So, lunar items, and there's also an equipment that you can get that will instantly kill you if you drop below 50% health. It's the fuel cell, I think. Um, those are all blacklisted from the random selection, so that is very reassuring. <laughs> wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be fucking dumb, though? If you, <laughs> if you opened a chest and it's like a red item or something that pops out, but you just instantly die because you got the fuel cell effect. got ah. so there's a green chest up there oh <laughs> I need to pay attention to what the equipment effects are because some of them are things that I need to aim I mean, I guess it, it probably won't matter too much once we get deeper into a run because I'm going to be more focused. I feel like there's a point in a Risk of Rain run where you start to become more focused on how to move through enemies while passively doing damage as opposed to um, intent, uh, uh, intentionally dealing damage to, to, to enemies. Because early in the runs, it feels like more like you are seeking out enemies intentionally to attack them. Uh, and doing damage individually to prioritize, but once it gets to the point where you are doing like a fuck ton of damage passively to the world around you, you don't have to worry about it so much, and you're more worried about avoiding projectiles. Ooh, I got it. Ooh! I think this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be uh, an equipment exploitation run where we're just amassing things that make it so that every time we use an equipment, the world just collapses around us. Ooh, there's a drone down there? And it also nets me the benefit of uh, being able to use equipment that I normally wouldn't pick up because I don't think they're worth it, like the scanner. I used to think the scanner was super uh, useful because I really liked um, being able to track down all of the items in the level, but as it got to the point where I learned I need to start prioritizing um, what items I'm getting and when, um, it became less useful. <laughs> but with this, now I can just use it randomly and it'll tell me where items are. We're gonna try and get all of the chests on this level. I know I saw a scrapper, so I'll be sure to use that once I get everything. Or right now, why not? I need to get rid of these squid polyps. 
I've been betrayed by my squids before. Um, okay, we'll get rid of the rest of the keys. I think the other... Th what else do we need to get rid of? Mm, banners. And I don't think there's anything else. Everything else that I have green item-wise is pretty useful. Where's the stone titan, though? <laughs> He's just bumbling around down there. Where are you at? Oh, I, I could have swore he was down here, but I guess not. We have a gold chest. Please, please let it be here. Oh, fuck. I need to hunt around for it. So I, it could be on top of this tree. Those are the main the main two places that I know where to look for the golden chest. Other than that, I would have to like go out of my way. And at that point, I don't think it would be worth it. So if it's not up here, we'll probably just move on unless I happen to see it. Oh fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on. One of the times that I wish I had a, a feather. Let's see. Please. Please let there be a chest up here. Oh, thank god. Get out of here. Lame. Yeah, I, I think it's I, I think somebody was uh talking about it on Twitter, how it's wild that Amazon pretty much came up with a holiday on the spot. Prime Day is is definitely, like, I don't know, Amazon in general is kind of scared. I, to, to be fair, when it comes to buying things, for the most part, uh, if it's something that I don't need to worry about the reliability for, for uh, mostly and uh, the alternative would be buying it on like a really weird sketchy store online um i'll buy something on amazon uh usually things on amazon are cheaper um and i'm poor so <laughs> but uh other than that amazon is very very scammy Yeah, like like what what Pete's is looking at right now is a a bunch of pencils that are uh, tagged as being razors, so that they can charge them, like charge more for them. But uh, yeah, I mean Amazon's just one big algorithm, so it's possibly it's not it's possible it's not intentional, but they're Amazon, so who fucking cares? But yeah, it's it's wild that Amazon just kind of was able to come up with a with a holiday, and and everybody was just like, "Cool, it's Prime Day! Happy Prime Day! Happy Happy Buy Things Day!" I mean, that is Black Friday, to be fair. However, no, I don't think there is a single. At least I'm not sure. Maybe I'll have to research it. But uh, there there is no single corporation in charge of uh, uh, Black Friday. So I think it's uh, I think it's pretty weird that Amazon has, has a holiday. We already had Capitalism Day, okay? We already have it.
Well, yeah, uh, vibrators, vibrators have uh, always kind of been marketed as massagers. Like that's that's how they that's how they sold the Hitachi Magic Wand back early in the day, like night like the nineteen like really early nineteen hundreds, where they they were they, that's how they marketed. They were like it's a personal massager. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 by, and there, a lot of massage tools and massagers are gen, genuinely used as massagers for like people that need them. Um, but that often a lot of sex toys are marketed in in that way, where they're called massagers as opposed to uh, as opposed to things that are explicitly supposed to. It, you know, it, it it's kind of how uh, you know lube lube is branded as personal lubricant. It's not. Uh, the, it's not not a lot of them lean super heavily into the like this is for sex vibe um it, especially if they're like front and center at like a like a walgreens like if you're buying something like a, like a walgreens most likely it's going to be labeled as personal lubricant or like a walmart or something like that yeah it, it's it's the same idea with like how they label the aisle uh, like something really like really really um, complicated or obscure or like a long like a, a fucking what, what, what do they call it when it's an aisle that has like condoms and shit in it family planning they'll call it family planning instead of <laughs> instead of contraceptive or like or something that implies that you're having sex they really don't want you to know that you're having sex Oh god. Oh boy. How did I get three vagrants? And there's still a stone titan alive. Come on. Come on. I'm fighting a stone titan and a wandering vagrant. You know, that might... I wonder if there is an artifact for that, where it's like you can mix up the bosses, where it's like if there's multiple bosses that spawn, it's possible that you'll that you'll spawn two different bosses instead of the same boss. Oh God! Oh Jesus! Oh Christ! Oh no! This one kind of caught me from caught me by surprise a little bit. Oh, Jesus. Two low health vagrants on either side of me with a stone titan in between them. That was rough. <laughs> I don't know how I set that up to be so bad on me. Okay, fuck it. I guess let's go, uh, let's go bandit. I had good luck with bandit last time. So we should, we don't have to super focus on getting like bleed or anything like that. No. Honestly, with Bandit, there's not too many uh, items that are bad. Which I think contributes to why I don't have too much issues playing, <laughs> playing Bandit. There's a med kit printer over there. Ooh, a Kiaro's band from a Shrine of Chance and a backup mag. So I'm assuming 
can't see the portal. I thought it would be up there, but... What do we got? A gnarled wood sprite. I actually learned that uh, the, the healing that they provide might seem minimal. However, uh, on monsoon runs, the wood sprites are extremely useful because your healing is, ha uh, I think, halved. when you're on monsoon so regenerating health is a gigantic pain in the ass if you don't have healing uh healing items and the wood sprite kind of brings your uh your regen back to normal levels oh. okay where is the teleporter hello is it over there okay yeah Another band. And there's this. I guess we can get some crowd control with the gasoline. There's also a scrapper, but I have picked up nothing but good, good item. All right. Let us leave. Yeah, I think one of the biggest strengths about Bandit is that you can literally just stealth your way out of a lot of situations. Or you have an, you, you, I get, you have an on-demand stealth kit, which uh, is, is more... Usually I don't think that the stealth kits are super duper useful, um, but when you have the ability to use it whenever you want, um, that's when it becomes uh, something that you can exploit and use in more powerful ways than if you just had a stealth kit. Because like just the fact that may being able to make every single enemy around you completely break aggro, super powerful. And it also makes it you don't you don't need as much healing, uh, honestly, on Bandit. I mean it's it, it's good and you like can still get hit by area of effect shit, but especially early on. Um being able to completely take off aggro is something you don't, you aren't normally able to do. A lot of the times when I die on like slower characters, it's because I have like hit scan enemies that are, <laughs> that are sitting there tracking me and I know that they're going to hit me and they're not going to miss. But uh, with Bandit, you could just go fucking stealth. Go ghost. Be Danny Phantom. Oh yeah, you know what I, what I learned? I've never, I've never really been the kind of person that plays Smite, but I learned that Smite uh, recently added, uh, and and you're you. This is not a joke. They added Danny Phantom as a playable character. They added um, Zim from Invader Zim, and they added Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> Like I I I can I can I can see Invader Zim. I can I I can see um, Danny Phantom kind of. Even though Danny I feel like Danny Phantom isn't like a pop culture icon. Like you don't see shirts of Danny Phantom in Hot Topic. Um, yeah, I, I get like Danny Phantom did kind of give like some some young queer some awakening, especially like. With the goth girl, uh, Deuter uh, protagonist, and uh, the white-haired young ghost boy, but uh, still, he's he's not someone that you would imagine to be like a like a like an icon, you know. <laughs> but Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life, like, I love Rocco. You would play as Rocco in Rocco's Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life in 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 Smite, the the popular. 3D MOBA <laughs> for one day Rocco's ultimate OP 
they didn't get uh, actor. Oh, they didn't get Zim's voice actor? No, they, oh shit. They didn't Yeah, I guess uh, Zim's Zim's voice actor is unionized, and they couldn't. Uh, the the person that's <laughs> or uh, Smite doesn't work with unionized uh, people apparently, so uh, they couldn't get Zim's original voice actor, which is kind of criminal. I mean, I do know somebody. Like, honest, I do follow somebody on uh, on Twitter. They're called Mar. Uh, I think Mark Marcus Shaw or something like that. They are. Uh, they do a really good Zim. Uh, Zim voice. They they do a lot of uh, like early cartoon impression in, impressions, uh, and, and it's really cool. But like, yeah. Otherwise, I couldn't see many other people doing a Zim voice. I also thanks to. Uh, Skosher, who is who was here the other day, uh, they inform me these cleansing pools can be used to uh, get rid of lunar items, and they give you stat increases. A red item, you say? Ooh, soulbound catalyst. Now I need to get a good. I need to get a good equipment once I get some healing down. We need to get out of here, though. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. I gotta leave. I gotta leave. Cool. Neato. Get out of here. Okay, cool. We're good. We're good. And we got a guillotine out of that. Nice. There is a drone over here that I could grab before we leave. I think we'll have enough time. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll grab this drone before we move on. God, all that talking about Morrowind earlier now kind of makes me want to play Morrowind. <laughs> I think uh, when in between the time that I played Morrowind on stream, I, what was it? It wasn't last year, was it? It was last year. Okay, yeah, it, it was, uh, yeah. It was all yeah. It was almost two years ago because I started playing. I started playing Morrowind. I think in November or December of 2020. Um, so almost two years. But uh, when I played Morrowind a while ago, I uh, I saved my I I saved my playthrough and my installation on my OneDrive, so I could at any point take it off and put it on my computer and continue playing where we left off. So I, I might do that, or make a new game. You know, and I also have it on my phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All. All you. Yeah. I was explaining earlier. All you need to do for to play Morrowind on your phone is to download the the engine and the game files. Yeah. Point. Okay. Ooh, med kit. I mean, cats sleep a lot. Like, <laughs> cats sleep a lot of the day. And they are usually. I mean, to be fair, though. I, I want to say that cats are most active during the night. However, um, 
our cats sleep with us the entire night. <laughs> like, like uh, one of our buzz it sits in between our heads for pretty much the entirety of the night. And he will let us bury him under like arms and He was wheezing. And he was going like, so I told him out. Okay, buddy. And then he started like about to throw up, and I was like, no. Oh. No. And then you sat up from a dead sleep and pushed him off the bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's just been my instinct. That's been my instinct. You're like, go. Whenever go. the cats wake, or whenever I wake, and this is often because our cats are fucking. I, I think we need to get them some sort of hairball formula, or something. Okay. Because, like, almost every other night, um, I'm woken up to the sound at, like, 2 or 3 a.m. of a cat, like, heaving. And, like, my instinct now has been to instinctively pick them up and as quickly as possible put them on the floor at the at the foot of the bed. Uh, and then they'll go do their business and I'll clean it up when I wake up. But I, 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 do, I do need to get them, like, some sort of, like, hairball-free cat food or, or some sort of supplement or something because it's become a problem. I mean, I'm sure it's not like anything crazy serious or anything like that, but but it is it is a mess. <laughs> and sometimes they'll like puke on clothes and shit that we have to that we have to clean. It is definitely hairballs though, and I think it's because our cats have been over grooming too. However, I think that now that one, uh, now that, now that Georgia is spayed, uh, some of them are kind of chilling out just a little bit. Like LB has started to actually be friendly <laughs> towards Georgia, which is where before they were like mortal enemies, and if you brought one of them close to the other one, they would instantly attack each other. But now they're fine. Bar. Okay, I need to leave because it is almost 15. Oh boy. Oh boy. Get out of here. I'm the bleed master, not you. Yeah, if I didn't if I didn't have my stealth ability, I would have been fucked in that instance. <laughs> like if I was just Huntress, I would have been fucked. We got a shatter spleen. It's a, it's going to be another crazy bandit run, am I right, my friends? We got fucking exploding spleens. Yeah, I think this was this was a little bit the basis for like how crazy my last run got. It's just or my last bandit run got. Um, we'll just have to see if I'm able to survive these. I think I got to the void fields and I got deleted. <laughs> Ideal first date: we go to the void fields and get deleted. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if if I'm going to ever hope to beat um, the Voidling on Monsoon. I'm going to have to do Void Fields on the first loop, because I think that the the issue that I'm running into is that like no matter how overpowered my build is, um, the fact that enemies can get items kind of breaks how uh, it. The fact that enemies get items and I'm confined to a small area um, breaks the normal rules where it's like, if I have, like, if I'm super overpowered, um, I can kind of take on more challenges and more enemies um, as long as I know how to, to traverse. But 
with the items, it does kind of unpredictable effects to, to, to the various attacks and movement patterns and shit of the enemies. So, and when you're on the second loop doing void fields, that means that the enemies are going to be extremely strong, like to the point where they're, they are, they're most likely going to one shot you as is. Um, but you're also giving them the advantage of items. <laughs> so it's really fucking easy to, to mess up. But if you're early in the run, it can be, it can be kind of compensated for. Oh, did I get a plasma shirt? Oh no, I have the poly loop. Poly loot. Poly loop. It is becoming kind of wild how uh, I'm starting to notice a little bit that Huntress is becoming a little bit more unreliable than Bandit, which is uh, wild because I've, I've played Huntress for a long, long time. Uh, and it's always been my comfort character, but I've just started to notice that I'm I've been excelling more Getting more consistent good runs with bandit than any other survivor He's just got that really good single point damage, I guess. Like, holy shit. I unloaded a clip into that Lemur or into that uh, Lemurian and then hit it with an R and it died in like less than two seconds. That poly loot does a lot of damage too. I think I'm gonna grab another infusion just to ensure that I have a good amount of extra max health. And I'm gonna build it up really fast because we're on stage four. gold do we need for this gold chest over here 2978 the caves were closed so we don't have to worry about wandering over there that hopefully means there's more items on the other parts of the map. No items up here, damn. I wonder if there's a, on this little ledge over here. Did they change the ch did they change the quest to where you unlock Rex? Oh. They didn't. It's the still the, same. the the quest to unlock Rex is you take the fuel cell to the robot. Yeah. I don't remember ever doing that, and I have Rex unlocked. No, that's that's still definitely how you unlock huh. Rex. Um, maybe maybe you you unlocked it. Yeah, I guess it's, yeah, it's probably possible that I unlocked it when Temp was doing it. Okay, that makes sense. Because I can't for the life of me remember unlocking Rex by doing the whole thing where you take the fuel cell through all three stages without dying. Eh. 
An energy drink? I wish I had an energy drink printer. <laughs> I feel like that that would make everyone love me. I would be the one, the person that like people go to to print them like a sugar-free Red Bull or something. All the quirky trans femmes that use synth synthesizers would be flocking to me when I can print them their monster zero energy. <laughs> it's a green oh, multi shot. I don't think I've ever had the, the the blue monster, the blue monster zero sugars, like the ones that are just the regular monster with just with zero sugar. I've only ever had the the white, the um, the monster zero ultra. That's white, and I don't know how to describe the flavor for it. All I know is that it's white. It's white flavor, okay. But I have no idea what the, the sugar, like the blue sugar-free monster is. I feel like with energy drinks, the color of the can really influences how I perceive the flavor. The blue one tastes like the green one. That's uh, pizza's review of the monster blue zero energy. Uh, the blue zero energy. <laughs> the zero sugar. Um... I feel like if I were to drink a blue uh, monster, I would perceive it as like a blue flavor, like like blueberry, I guess, I don't know. With the white ones, I don't know what I imagine. Like, I, I guess I just imagine fucking coconut, I don't know. Ooh, a trial of the mountain. Yeah, and I think we're doing enough damage that we can handle that. And we got a feather. But I think that's pretty much all of the items in the stage. So we can just focus on getting this gold chest and then get the fuck out of here. I think we need like 2,900 or something. Come on. I think it was 987. I'm gonna be wild if that number, I have crazy good memory. Oh no, it was 2978. I was close, but I reversed the last two numbers. What? The teal monster? Mango. Oh, it's like Fiesta. Yeah. The teal Fiesta monster. It's okay. I mean, they have, yeah, they have a zero sugar version of that one, I think. But I don't know. I don't drink as many... I don't drink a lot of energy drinks anymore because I used to I used to drink a lot of energy drinks like every other day at least every other day I would um, I would buy an energy drink like a bang or a couple rock stores to get uh, rock stores rock stars to get me through the day but um, ever since I started my Vivance I have not felt the need in any way. <laughs> It was really weird because I always, I used to be like, I can't survive without my energy drink in the morning. Like, I'm going to feel like shit if I don't. But now that I have my Vivance, I just, it's fine. Like, I'm cool. Yeah, that too. I mean, sometimes I'll still drink an energy drink because, like, I, I like the tape. Like, I, it's weird because, like, 
energy drinks do kind of taste like battery acid in, in many ways. Um, just a regular sugar-free rock star definitely tastes like bad battery acid or like a regular Red Bull. But like, I still like it. And I think that's just only because like, yeah, when, when it comes to like beer and shit, I, it, it tastes weird and I still like it. And it's like refreshing. You didn't like beer. Yeah, I think I, I tried a beer when I was like really, I tried a beer when I was really young and I thought it was the worst thing that I had ever tasted. Um, but as I grew, uh, as I like, was living with stoner roommates in in college who drank a lot of like really cheap beer i i <laughs> it's now has like a nostalgic value and also a refreshing value and also the drug value we got a green printer it is razor wire. So right now, where we are lacking, we have a good setup. We are just mainly lacking in healing. But we are doing really well in damage. We're also lacking in uh, mobility, I think. Come on. Nice. There's a green multi shot. Ooh, missiles. I know I said that I was I know I said we were short on mobility and there was a there was a uh, a, a quail there, but you can't you can't be offered missiles and turn them down. a void seed over here. And there are six void mon- oh god! Void glup. We got something that's going to boost our uh, our ignite effects by quite a bit. Oh yeah. All right, we got five. Void monsters. Where are they at? Oh, there's one there. Where are the other ones? Oh, they're way up there. Amazing. Oh, holy shit. Big crab. Crab boy! Oh, he did a lot of damage to me that with that one hit. Now he's gonna try and erase me. Oh no! Alright, there's a void void boy over there. I hated that. No. 
teleporting enemies are the worst because they always teleport right at the moment that you're about to hit them. This could also possibly indicate that I'm just dumber than AI. But I don't like to think about that fact. <laughs> Renald's band. What? Oh no, you f <laughs> You're gonna do what? Oh, okay. I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. I will be right back, hold on.
Oh, All right. Oh, We're Jesus back. Uh, by the way, this is a public service announcement. A cab means Paw Patrol. Fuck the Paw Patrol. They are class traitors who are here to indoctrinate our children into thinking that cops are cuddly little boys. <laughs> Okay, we, we, we I, I think we, we, we got a good chance of the, the void fields, or at least we can go fight Mithrix. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm just gonna do that because I think that'll unlock um, a new skin for Bandit, which will make me wanna play Bandit more. So <laughs> that's how it goes. Every time I get in, actually that's kind of what got me into League of Legends actually is because, uh, again, is because I, uh, I was looking at my because I have Amazon Prime. I don't know how. I don't pay for it. It has just been there and I've not questioned it. I've not done anything. I've just let it run its course. And I have Amazon Prime for some fucking reason. But I, um, I, so I get all the benefits of that. And one of the benefits is that I got a, a masterwork chest for League of Legends. Um, and I got a skin out of it and it was a Shen skin. And so now for the past three or four days, I've been playing Shen just because I have a fancy skin for him. But, um, yeah, th th that's how it works for me. <laughs> that's how my brain works. I get, I get a shiny new skin and I want to, to use it. We got one, one, one more void boy. He's over there. There he is. Okay. No, oh, no, shit. Fuck, I forgot that I have to kill the <laughs> the little the little guy. You know, that little guy. We got a safer spaces. Oh, no, fuck, no, no, don't do it. I hate those little bugs. They're the worst. Get the I can't. <laughs> They're the worst thing about playing Bandit. Okay. We don't have, I don't think, we don't need crit glasses, so Lost Year's lenses make sense. Oh, there's another corrupted item station over here. Yeah, I think we're gonna fight Mithrix this time around. We've got the potential, I think. And Huntress is the only uh, only character I've beat Mithrix on. Uh, Lysate Cell? Okay. At an extra charge. Ooh, wait, I mean, I don't know why that would be. I guess if we miss a, if we miss an R, then we have a backup R. But I don't know why I would need a whole lot of these. Yeah, doesn't matter if I, uh, if I get enough lysate sales, it doesn't even matter if I do the killing blow. Give me something. All right. I guess we should mosey on. Yeah, I think I think we're just gonna fight Mithrix. I want to see what this skin will be like. Easy peasy. Oh yeah. And we got another ukulele out of it. Oh 
hoping I don't eat my own ass when I uh, fight Mythrix, though. Especially in that last phase. I, I, I don't know what to expect now that they've... I don't know. They've done a lot of worth on... When I beat Mythrix as Huntress, it was a long time ago. It was way before they did all of the reworking of his phases and the area around him. I mean, good news though. His uh, the track that that plays when he uh, that plays during the the fight hasn't changed, so that that's good. I really like the track that plays. I think Mythrix's track is one of my favorites in 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 the game. I, the the track that plays when you are in his second phase. Um, I think the track is titled "You're Gonna Need a Bigger Ukulele" or something like that. And it's just, it's just great. I, I love the composer for the Risk of Rain soundtrack. I mean, okay, so we have two options. We can either fight Mithrix, or we can go to the Void Fields and try to beat Voidling. The rewards at either of these branches would be that if I go the Void Fields route and beat it, I will gain access to the Void Fiend Survivor. If I go the Mythrix route, then I will gain a new Bandit skin. I think realistically... Hmm. I get the Bandit skin if I beat the Voidling too? Yeah. You, okay. You uh, okay. Well... I guess we're gonna do void fields then, because if I can get the skin and the void fiend, that would be great. I'm not gonna get this red item, even though I really want to, because I don't. I think if I got rid of any if of any green items, it would fuck up my build really bad. Um. I could survive a quail. It got rid of our med kit and gasoline and an energy drink, but I think that's that's not too bad. There is a shaped glass, but I think that would be too risky. Okay, well this is it. I think we we we've got a good amount of damage, um, and because we're going on the first loop, I think it won't be too bad. But we'll see. Let's 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 pray. Pray to the RNG gods that I do not get any enemy with a really inconvenient item. We got stone golems. Not too bad. There's some movement speed over here. I can hear them like shambling along, but I can't see them. Oh Jesus, oh no. Okay. Jesus, oh God. They ambushed me. Like all of them showed up at once. Okay, Jesus Christ, that was rough. Holy fuck. Do I not have any healing? Okay, no, hold on. I'm just, I'm just gonna, don't mind me. I'm just gonna stand here while I let my fungus heal me. 
Okay, we gotta we gotta go. Where's the next one? I swear to God, if I die. Oh shit! God damn it! Hold on. Can can I out heal it with my fungus? I can. We're saved. I can out heal it with my fungus. What do you know? Yeah, in case you didn't notice, they they bumped up the damage on the void fog. Yeah, the void fa the void fog is is rough, but our fungi are uh, out healing it by a good six HP per second. <laughs> That would be super embarrassing if I had kept running and I and I died even though I could have just stood still. Okay, let's go. I also noticed that they made it so that the timer runs while you're here too. All right, uh, so they've got armor plating. Which is, which is fine, I guess. It's not as bad as other things. I think the only way that the Titans can come up is this way. And I'm looking around just in case. Oh, Jesus. Ah! Okay, cool. So we've got... I'm just gonna pick this. We'll get the get the get the bomb. What do we got? Uh, mystery slug crowbar. <laughs> we don't have a particularly useful equipment seeing that we have a red item that <laughs> that benefits us most when we're using our equipment. So I should probably find a re uh, replacement for that. We got glups though. That could become problematic depending on how many there are. <laughs> But our crowd control seems to be doing its job for the most part. All right, what do we got? We got energy drink? Sure. Onward and upward. My strategy is just gonna be wandering about. You know, I stand here, out heal it a little bit. Ooh, we got the running mushroom. I wonder if it'll heal us the same. Okay, it does. It does. Okay. Oh, it does more healing. So now we don't even have to... Now if we run, I don't have to stand still anymore. I can just run and, and out heal the, the void. Amazing. Oh, 
Oh, this could become problematic very quickly. Ah! Leave me alone. No! Ah! Okay, I think, I, I think we're okay. Oh, they've got, they've got delicate watches. That's unsettling. I don't like that. Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Okay, what do we got? Crowbar, backup mag. Crowbar. Okay, um, where to next? We've still got five more. Five more cells to do. And now we've got lesser wisps. Bees do so much for the environment. BDSM. Oh, get out of here with your bullshit. Jesus Christ, so many wisps. Oh, don't kill me. Don't, don't fucking do it. There's so many wisps. Like, there's a lot of them. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, cool. I think we're fine. I think we're okay. Christ. Okay, another ukulele? Sure. I'm gonna heal up by running around, <laughs> which is not something that you would think somebody would say in the void fields. But it is legitimately healing me. I kind of feel like when we're in the void fields and I'm running around with the weeping fungi, uh, fungus, it, it kind of makes me feel like Rock Lee when he has the, uh, when he has the weighted things on his shins. <laughs> where it's like my healing is only at a fraction of its power, but yet I can still overwhelm the void. All right, we got four more. Oh Christ, oh we are r uh What? Excuse me? <laughs> What hit a stone golem? Hit me with a single late. This is what I mean when I talk about trying to beat the void fields is that no matter how many items I have, there are very few things that can save you from a single wisp hit and then a, and then a titan hitting you with its laser immediately after. It's, it's effectively a one shot, but not a one shot. It is. Wow. <laughs> I don't I don't even think that I've been to like I think the only time that I've been to the point where I got to got through the void fields and got to the the boss was when I was on Rainstorm. I don't think I ever got to the point on Monsoon where I was able to get to that last get to that last boss even past the void fields in general. It always feels like it fucks me over in some way. But anyway, my saltiness aside, I'm going to uh, be back on Friday with some more Golden Sun. We are going to continue on our quest. 
I think we've gotten through the third or fourth dungeon. Uh, we're on part four, I think, of Golden Sun. So if you want to check out the earlier parts um, and catch up on what we've been doing uh, over the course of the streams, you can check those out on YouTube uh, or in my history here on Twitch. Um, but we'll be back on Friday at 4 p.m., same time with some Golden Sun, and then on Saturday at 1 p.m. with Golden Sun as well. And we'll just continue on with that. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Stay hydrated. Um, take a piss. Do not um, suddenly start skateboarding to work seven miles a day and give yourself shin splints. That's... Do, in, do remember to inject your estrogen and or testosterone. It's self-care. And I'll see you all on Friday. Peace out.